On my first playthrough of Abyssal Plain, I understood that I probably wouldn't be able to find everything, but the amount of information that I have found on a second playthrough is astonishing. Here are the things that we all missed on our first playthrough of Abyssal Plain. Let's first talk about something that hides in plain sight. The names of the four bases found around the world. Now the first one you discover is Lantern, and this one seems quite self-evident. The base is very well lit and is a place of safety and fortitude. But right next to it, you find the base Grawlitter. Now Grawlitter is a rather particular name. The name itself originates from the description of a common type of three-toed bipedal theropod dinosaur, and Grawliters have been dated back all the way to the early Triassic period. And what do we find at Grawlitter? A completely destroyed base. And what is left at the scene of the crime? A giant, dislocated, bloody tooth. Now Angler is rather interesting because it is where you are first introduced to the NPCs of the world, which just so happen to take the form of an angler fish, or an angler type fish. And inside the angler base, you find photographs of deep sea creatures, including angler fish, for research purposes. And finally, Sedna. Now Sedna is a rather interesting name because it has nothing to do with animals or deep sea creatures. Sedna is the name of the coldest and most distant object known in our solar system. And where is Sedna located in the map? The furthest and last place that you discover on your roundabout trip in the Abyssal Plain. The names have purposes, and the creator has made intelligent decisions on what those purposes are. Another piece of evidence that seemingly hides in plain sight is the little structure outside of Sedna. Once a button is clicked, a satellite dish will activate after a certain amount of time, and then, if the buttons are interacted with, multiple voice lines are heard, custom voice lines, that talk about Midas and the deep sea dives that they do. Here are the recordings that were found. This is Station Plant, the girl speaking. Oh, you're one of those abyss guys, right? Mm. This sucks, doesn't it? Hey, on the bright side, you got back. Definitely enjoy the surface like you never did before. <sighs> Please don't give me the creeps. I'm not going to say anything else. I'll see you on the surface. Okay. Hello, this is Station Nautilus. Oh, hey, it's you. I didn't recognize the call ID. I thought they broke that thing. I have to go, but before I do, can you check on Travis for me? He works at Gralator. I can't do my work without the sample. Even he hasn't responded in seven hours. Oh yeah, I have to go. Good luck down there. This is Station Starfish. I'll be responding. Oh, this is the temporary line. I said I'm still getting its fish like that. So, uh, how did the days at night? work down there. Do you can sleep down there? Like, when do you know when to sleep? Also, is it true that there's something called the border feaster down there? Like, you gotta tell me more. Now here's a piece of evidence that definitely has gone under most people's radar. While other things have been hiding in plain sight, this had to be discovered particularly. The numbers 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, and 42 appear in succession on a specific computer right outside the O2 room. Now, the numbers 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, and 42 frequently occur in the show Lost. Each corresponded with one of the final candidates to replace Jacob as protector of the island. But most importantly, this also formed the coefficients in an equation that predicted mankind's extinction. Whether the rest of the world above the water has gone extinct as these numbers proclaim is up to the imagination. But considering that Grey the Raptor took inspiration from Iron Lung, it can be safely assumed that something terrible has indeed occurred above the surface. This is the part of the video that I would like to correct a couple mistakes that I had previously made in my other video. 
Originally, I believed that the O2 system found in Angler could only be temporarily fixed and you could only stay in there for a certain amount of time as some form of game element. But, as it later turns out, there is a wrench that you can find inside a Viper. When brought to the external O2 interface, can actually repair the O2 system entirely. This is a super cool fact that I thought was fun to discover. And finally, the dolls. I originally thought that there was a single doll that followed you around the map because the doll mysteriously disappears from the lantern area and reappears at Angler. But as it turns out, if you take the doll with you from lantern and put it in your submarine, if you go to Angler, you will find a separate doll with a different shirt on. There are multiple dolls found throughout the map. There is one found in Viper behind the propane tank and one found in Sedna behind a satellite dish. Four dolls in total. Now my original theory was that the presence that you discover at the end of the game was behind the doll's abilities. And I discovered a couple new abilities. The dolls, when inspected when holding the C key, can be lit aflame and their gravity removed. These are very odd traits for a normal doll to have, so clearly they have some form of supernatural ability. But the reasoning behind that is still unknown. I did notice that Grey the Raptor commented on my last video on the Abyssal Plane. So, Grey the Raptor, if you happen to be watching this video, I would love to hear an explanation for these dolls. Perhaps there's something that you have hidden in the map that I still have not found, or perhaps that's something you intend to add at a later time. Whatever it is, I am very excited to see what you do next. Thank you all for sticking around this long, and as always, till next time.